if you're like me and you Google to see what horror movies are coming out this year, don't worry. I got you. I put together this 2022 lineup. Timestamps will be in the description below. And don't get too attached to these release dates. Now, a lot of these movies on the lineup don't have official release dates. But for the ones that do, they could be delayed if things in the pandemic get worse. So don't get attached. But let's get into the lineup. First on the lineup, Hellraiser. It'll be a straight to Hulu release with Clive Barker returning as producer. It's being directed by David Bruckner. Actress Jamie Clayton from Sense8 will be our new pinhead. Now some fans will love this, some fans will hate it, some fans will just be intrigued. But at the end of the day, all I want is a good story and a good execution. Now Clive Barker did go on to praise the production saying, Having seen some of the designs from Bruckner's new Hellraiser film, they pay homage to what the first film created, then take it to places it's never been before. This is a Hellraiser on a scale that I simply didn't expect. As of right now, there has been no official release date. My theory is that they're aiming for a fall release, but time will tell. And hopefully, this movie going straight to Hulu isn't a precursor for the quality of the film. Up next is Nope. And we don't know anything about this movie other than Jordan Peele is directing, Daniel Kaluuya is in it, Kiki Palmer is in it, and Stephen Y, because I can't pronounce his last name, is also in it. No plot has been given, no release date has been given. All we have is the cast, the director, and a poster. Now maybe this film is about aliens or some type of creature. It's Jordan Peele, so who knows what to expect. I do have to say I'm very excited about a film I know very, very little about. But speaking of creatures, or should I say monsters, The Monsters is being directed by Rob Zombie. No release date and no plot or synopsis has been given just yet, but it will be streaming on Peacock and released in theaters at the same time. Now, Rob Zombie is a huge fanatic of The Monsters uh, series. So knowing how he is as a filmmaker i wonder what a monsters movie will look like coming from rob zombie and i actually like i'm actually excited i'm actually interested in this uh film and from some of the set images it looks like he's recreating the look of the originals i can't wait to see what he does with this film my best friend's exorcism is actually a film adapted movie i can vouch for not the film itself because it's not out yet but the book it's a grady hendrix novel it's set in 1988 it's about friendship and demonic uh possession and honestly i listened to it through audible and it's a good book i highly recommend the book it's a good story even though i have to say the end of the book how the exorcism is resolved i didn't really like if I'm remembering the end correctly, I didn't really feel it. But overall, the story is great, and I hope they're able to translate it into film. It's being produced by uh, Chris Landon, who wrote and direct Happy Death Day. So that's a plus. Um, it's about a two girls, two best friends who grew up together, Abby and Gretchen. Uh, they're best friends, and one of them is possessed. And basically, their friendship is tested. And supposedly this movie is expected to be picked up by amazon studios so maybe it's more than likely going to go straight to amazon prime but i'm hoping hoping that they're able to translate the novel into film perfectly texas chainsaw massacre going straight to netflix is directly connected to the first original movie so it's taking a halloween route and ignoring all other sequels the plot is pretty much very basic a bunch of teenagers go where they're not supposed to go and they bump into Leatherface who has been in hiding since the first original movie and this movie is slated to release February 18th 2022 hopefully fingers crossed this movie is good I just have a feeling it might not be but hopefully I'm wrong up next is Salem's Lot a Stephen King story about a writer who returns to his childhood hometown but the town is overrun with vampires probably oversimplifying it a little bit It'll be produced by James Wan and written and directed by Gary Doberman, who directed Annabelle Comes Home and who wrote 2017's It 1 and 2019's It Chapter 2. The slated release date is September 9th, 2022. Firestarter, another Stephen King novel being adapted yet once again. Not much is known. Um, it's rated R. It's set in present day. Zac Efron has been casted as the dad of the Firestarter 
but no release date has been specified no streaming service or theatrical release has been stated either evil dead rise now this movie is canon to the original franchise and not connected to the 2013 evil dead remake now sam raimi and bruce campbell have signed on to be executive producers and unlike its predecessors where the film generally takes place in a secluded location the film is set in a los angeles apartment building where two sisters discover the cursed ex mortis book as of right now there no official release date has been specified and also no word on if it's going straight to streaming theatrical only or if it's going to be both streaming and theatrical Jeepers Creepers Reborn, a reboot directed by Timo V, follows a boyfriend and girlfriend, Chase and Lane, as they head to the Horror Hound Festival, where Lane experiences disturbing visions associated with the Creeper and the town's past. As the festival gets underway, Lane believes something unearthly has been summoned for the first time in 23 years and that she is at the center of it. Now, this movie was originally supposed to come out in 2021 but was delayed to 2022 with no specific release date as of yet. Orphan First Kill is a prequel to Orphan and it centers on Lena escaping from an Estonian psychiatric facility and coming to America by impersonating the missing daughter of a wealthy Connecticut family. But Lena's new life as Esther comes with an unexpected wrinkle and pits her against the mother who will protect her family at all costs. Now, Paramount did buy the rights to Orphan, so whether it's going straight to Paramount Plus or getting a theater release or both, they haven't stated yet. And Isabella, who plays Esther, is coming back and she's 24, about to be 25, and they're de-aging her with mostly practical effects and very little CGI. As of right now, no release date has been specified. I also think this movie is highly unnecessary because we've seen orphan we know she's going to succeed in whatever she's doing in this film halloween ends the which is the finale to the sequel trilogy to the original halloween and honestly they have lots of explaining to do after that ending of halloween kills and at the beginning of this film apparently there will be a time jump and apparently the pandemic is going to play a part now that part i i'm gonna be honest with you i i kind of hate like, just because we're going through a pandemic in real life doesn't mean I want to see that on screen, especially not in a movie like Halloween. But I don't know. Maybe they wrote it in a way that it, you know, it'll work out. Fingers crossed. But October 14th is the release, slated release date of Halloween Ends unless they delay it, which I hope they don't. Dark Harvest, based on a novel by Norman Pertridge, is set in a small town that's terrorized by a supernatural force. Every fall, a pumpkin-headed ghoul known as Sawtooth Jack appears, and rather than hide from the creature, youth annually set out to confront Jack and those who beat him are able to finally escape their hometown. Now, this does seem interesting, and I do have to say, it is nice to see a horror film that's not a reboot, a sequel, or a prequel is directed by david slade who also directed 30 days of night the original date it was supposed to come out last year fall but now it's been delayed to september 9th of this year and if you read the novel by any chance let me know down in the comments below is this story actually good the black phone is another horror film that i am highly excited for it's the first time ethan hawk is playing a villain the only gripe i have is that the trailers show too much, or I feel like the trailers show too much. Hopefully when I watch the movie, most of the good stuff in the movie is not in the trailer, but it played at a festival. It has raving first reactions and first reviews, but unfortunately it was delayed to June 24th. It was supposed to come out sooner. I think it was supposed to come out January or February or something like that, but they pushed it to June 24th, unfortunately. The news of Haunted Mansion is bumming me out and it shouldn't because haunted mansion is one of my favorite rides at disneyland but the film is being directed by justin simeon who directed dear white people and they're going the comedy route again the story is about a single mom trying to get rid of ghosts in her newly purchased home basic premise fine but they're deciding to go the comedy route again like they did with the 2003 Eddie Murphy version. I feel like this time around, how about you lean more towards the horror aspect? And I get that it's supposed to be a family film, 
but we already went the comedy route with Eddie Murphy. Let's do something different this time. It just, it, it really bums me out as a horror fan. And like I said, Haunted Mansion is one of my favorite rides. But it's a great cast. I mean, Rosario Dawson, Owen Wilson, Danny DeVito, Lakeith Stanfield from Atlanta and Get Out, Tiffany Haddish. Sure, great cast, but once again, I don't really want to see a comedic Haunted Mansion movie. That's what the Muppets are for. And once again, we have the Eddie Murphy version for that. Whatever. No official release date has been announced, but I'm pretty sure they're aiming for an and uh october released tell me how you feel about this haunted mansion news down in the comments below i'm bummed out last but not least is hocus pocus 2 and fletcher's directing she also directed the proposal 27 dresses the original sisters are coming back billy butcherson is coming back the zombie boyfriend which i don't fully understand why why he's back because of the events of the first film but whatever they're back i'm excited to see it i love the first film so hopefully I will end up loving the second film. There is no specific release date, but it comes out sometime fall 2022, which is basically, I'm pretty sure they're aiming for October release, which is only fitting. And for two of the honorable mentions, we have Morbius and Doctor Strange 2. Now Morbius is technically, I guess, considered a horror film, so why not include it? And Doctor Strange 2 isn't a horror film, but there's gonna be traces of horror elements to the movie from what i hear it's supposed to be the first mcu horror film kind of i guess i don't know anyway i guess they're horror enough to be mentioned but not on the official uh lineup list if that makes sense and those are your horror films for 2022 now during this lineup i noticed two things one is that out of the 15 movies on this list only five of them are not reboots, sequels, or prequels. And that's pretty damn sad. Not good numbers. And the second thing I noticed was that we don't have any Conjuring Universe films this year. I mean, I know that Conjuring 3 was pretty damn bad, but I hope they didn't pull the plug and just decided to quit on the Conjuring Universe. I just hope that hopefully they're just taking a break because even though some of those movies sucked, like Conjuring 3 and The Nun, um, I was digging a lot of them, you know what I'm saying? So hopefully they're just taking a break. They didn't give up and 2023, they they ramp it back up. So we'll have to wait and see. But which movie, horror movies on this lineup are you most excited for? Thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. And I will catch you guys in the next video.